This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Church at Five from St Andrews in Canberra. My name's Bruce Farrington. I'd like to extend this welcome to all our regular Church at Five members who would normally be here and to other people who may be watching from around Canberra, around Australia, or even other countries around the world. As part of our international connectedness, we have music this evening coming from our friend Helen Fox in Auckland, New Zealand. Welcome Helen, Russell and Hazel. Thank you for being with us and sharing your talents. Some great news for our regular church at five people. Grace and Remy would like to announce the safe arrival of a baby daughter. We're all very excited to see you and welcome this beautiful blessing from God into our community. Even in the dark days of global pandemic, we see demonstrations of God's unfailing love. In the midst of darkness, the light still shines. With a spiralling death toll and infection rates shown every night on TV news, with graphs that seem to reduce the pain and suffering of families and loved ones to a dot point on a data on a line, we hear the cry, where is God in all of this? The God of the Old Testament sometimes has a reputation for being a God of vengeance, a God of retribution, a God of punishment. We have dim memories of stories of lightning bolts from heaven, pillars of salt, devastating floods. There were invasions and slavery, droughts and massacres, captivity and punishment, and the people of Israel crying out, where is God in all of this? Yet there is another message, another theme that runs through the Old Testament. It's a message of peace, a message of hope, a message of patience, a message of God's unfailing love. And this theme is repeated constantly through the Psalms, Psalm 13. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. Psalm 17. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Psalm 33. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Psalm 36, your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Psalm 143, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. And ultimately, the narrative of the Old Testament leads us to Bethlehem and the ultimate demonstration of God's unfailing love to the birth of a baby who will be the saviour of mankind, the Messiah, the promised one, God on earth, God with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. O Lord our God, God of resurrection and power, you called your son out of the tomb and in so doing called the whole creation into new life. Even now you call us to join your way of resurrection. You lift our eyes and raise our hearts. You transform our minds and renew our spirits. Bring us once again into awareness of your presence, that we may offer you our worship and be ready for your kingdom's work. Thank you for your amazing power and the work you do in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you that you're able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you that you're always with us and will never leave us. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom in life. Forgive us when we are ungrateful for who you are, for all you do, for all you've given. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with peace and joy. We thank you for the safe arrival of a baby daughter for Grace and Remy. We pray you'll continue to bless them and their family. Keep them safe and well. Hold them in the palm of your hand. We praise you for your provision and for propelling us into our callings by unveiling our strengths and weaknesses. Help us to listen, to learn and to seek you in all we do, for we desire to serve you. Every good gift comes from you, Father. Help us to be grateful for your provision, your protection and your grace. Remind us in moments of frailty and desperation or lack of confidence that you are with us. You are unchanging, unfailing, the lover of our souls. We love you and we need you this day and every day. 
We give you praise and thanks, for you alone are worthy. Amen. Now we're going to sing a song to start the service, and the song is, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. reading this evening is from Mark chapter 1, verses 40 to 45. Jesus cleanses a leper. And a leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him, and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. But he went out and began to talk freely about it and to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town but was in desolate places and people were coming to him from every quarter. Now we're going to say a prayer for the community. Dear Lord, when it comes to praying for others around the world and nearer to home, we confess our heaviness of heart. There are so many needs in this world and we can feel overwhelmed. Yet we trust in your holy name and we know that you understand our weaknesses in knowing quite how to pray. 
So we open up our hearts now unto you as we bring matters before your throne of grace. We pray for every country affected by coronavirus and ask that this terrible thing will soon pass. As we await for this time, we commit to you all the thousands of nurses, doctors, nursing home workers, and other health care providers working in many countries. Lord, please place them in your protective hand and grant them great courage and stamina for the huge tasks at hand. Lord, for all who have died serving the sick and dying, we pray for their loved ones. Please come alongside them in their grief. We ask that you would grant godly wisdom to all world leaders and their governments. Would you ensure that they do all in their power to come alongside and help their people? Lord, we know that many refugee camps continue to have shortages. We pray tonight for the largest one in the world, the Zatiri camp in Jordan. We hear of desperate conditions there. Lord, please help all the charities to have enough resources for their basic needs. We have heard that many of the ISIS widows in these camps continue to spread the, the ISIS ideology and they cause many violent attacks. We think of their children listening to this wicked pro propaganda and so we pray that you would protect the minds of the children from being poisoned and that your hand will be upon these children. Please cause these widows to have a change of heart. Lord, we bring before you the worldwide persecuted church. Please keep safe these Christians in China who were dragged away from their homes on Easter Sunday whilst taking part in their online church services. We pray that you will protect them and have them soon return to their loved ones. We hear from the voice of the martyrs that the poor Christians of Pakistan are struggling and because they only have very menial jobs, they do not have money. Prices have shot up and they are fearful that many Christians there will die of starvation rather than the virus. Lord, this is the same in Bangladesh and India and no doubt many other places. We pray that you would provide for the needs of all your saints at this time. We know that the Christian community in Sri Lanka is in mourning for the first anniversary of that terrible atrocity last Easter. Lord, with more restrictions being announced for followers there, we pray that despite pressure and threats, the believers will stand firm and steadfast. We ask for resources to become available for those organisations who seek to support all those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for Open Doors, the Voice of the Martyrs, the Barnabas Fund and others. Make a way for them to be able to help more and more people. At this time, we pray for our servicemen and women, past and present, and for the sacrifices they have made to keep our country safe and secure. We pray for their families, for strength, and for the support they give to our servicemen and women. We pray for the families of the four police officers killed in the line of duty. Give their families the strength to cope with this horrendous tragedy. And now we pray for our own church community, here at St Andrews, in our three churches. During this COVID-19 crisis, we think of our church members with family and friends scattered around the world. We ask that you keep them safe in your embrace while they're away. Lord, we ask that we would practice being the body of Christ, one to another. Please show each of us how we can come alongside those in our churches who may be struggling with illness or loss of work, mental health struggles or loneliness. Please visit each such home by your Holy Spirit. We ask that in our weaknesses, your strength will be revealed. All these matters we bring before you, Lord, and pray that your will will be done. Amen. And we will now sing the song, What a Beautiful Name.
Who would you most like to meet? Her Majesty the Queen, the Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, the Governor General of Australia, David Hurley, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, Pope Francis, Bill Gates, or Steve Smith, or some other person that you have read about and admire. On a visit to England back in 2015, I met Edwina Curry, the former Minister for Health in Margaret Thatcher's British government. She came to fame over the famous Salmonella affair back in the 1980s. It is a fascinating experience meeting people in the flesh that we have only seen on television. When you meet someone famous, you might only have a few minutes with them, but you remember the encounter for the rest of your life. It's unlikely, but possible, that having an encounter with someone famous might just change your life a little bit. Tonight, I am beginning a short series of sermons at our Church at Five services online, entitled, People Who Jesus Met. In most cases, people who met Jesus were changed completely. It is my prayer that as we look at various individuals and groups of people who met Jesus, that each one of us will also meet him, so that our lives will be changed in a profound way. We begin with the leper's encounter with Jesus that we have recorded in Mark chapter 1, verses 40 to 42. The leper came to Jesus with a desperate plea for help. He begged Jesus to heal him. Verse 40b. If you are willing, you can make me clean. This man didn't just have spots of leprosy. His whole body was covered with them. It was obvious to everyone who saw him that he had this terrible, loathsome disease. He couldn't hide it. He was desperate enough to break the social rules so that he could come close to Jesus. As a leper, he should have always practiced social distancing from people. But on this occasion, he broke all the rules and drew near to Jesus. Why did he did so? It was because he had no doubt in his mind that somehow Jesus would be able to heal him from his terrible disease. In Luke's account of this incident, the leper showed his respect for Jesus by addressing him as Lord. He may have heard of things Jesus had been doing in other places and therefore saw him as a servant of God, if not even as the Messiah. The leper's problem was that while he believed Jesus could heal him, he was uncertain about whether Jesus would heal him. Why was that a problem for him? Because he was severely afflicted with leprosy, it meant he was unclean in the sight of people in the community where he lived. But worse still, he was unclean in the sight of God. Lepers had been given strict instructions to cry out, Unclean! Unclean! and to live in isolation from normal people. There was a prevailing attitude at the time that sickness was derived from sin, 
which meant that this man could have been regarded as a terrible sinner having such an obvious disease. Nevertheless, even though he was shunned by people, he came to Jesus with a desperate plea for help. I wonder, do you share the leper's problem? Oh, of course, you don't suffer from the disease of leprosy. But you have a debilitating condition of some kind that has affected your general health for years. That may be physical, emotional, psychological, or spiritual. While you know that Jesus has the power to heal you, your problem is you are not sure that he will. The leper knew that Jesus could heal him, but he didn't know if Jesus would heal him in the same way that he had healed others. The answer came sooner than he expected. Verse 41a. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. Jesus' response is clear but surprising. He touched this untouchable leper. By touching the leper, Jesus would have shocked onlookers who knew of the ritual uncleanness of a person suffering from leprosy. Because Jesus touched the leper, they considered he was now unclean. But this man wasn't going to be a leper for much longer. The power of leprosy would be overcome by the power of God operating through Jesus. The leper was given an assurance by Jesus. Verse 41b, I am willing, he said. Jesus was saying that he was not only able to heal this man, but he was willing to do so. He wanted to heal this unclean human being who was on the scrap heap of society. Jesus spoke an authoritative word, verse 41c. Be clean. The leper's healing was immediate and complete, verse 42. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. What incredible power was demonstrated when this man, who one minute was completely covered with leprosy, the very next minute was completely healed. May I suggest that what you need tonight is the touch of Jesus upon your physical body. You have no doubt that Jesus could touch and heal you, but you are uncertain about whether he is willing to do so. Due to the COVID-19 Many people are forced to live in isolation from family members and friends. These people are desperately longing for a human touch, such as a warm embrace. Because of the current restrictions, they are denied the opportunity of a human touch. Are you one of these people? 
you can't have a human touch at this time. And you won't be able to have one for some time yet. But my message for you this evening is this. You can have a divine touch from Jesus. His healing power is exactly the same tonight as it was back when he lived in this world. And it is available to you wherever you are. There's a hymn writer called Henry Twells, and he wrote a lovely hymn about Jesus. And amongst the words are these words. He writes, Your touch has still its ancient power. No word from you can fruitless fall. What you need more than anything else is a touch from Jesus, the master healer. Not only is he able to heal you, but he is willing to heal you. Will you let him touch you? Amen. Our final song this evening is entitled, That's Why We Praise Him. Oh, 
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for a sense of your presence in our service this evening. We pray that each and every one of us who have been sharing in this time of worship might be able to experience your touch, which still has its ancient power. And for many of us who at this time cannot have a touch from a human person, may we experience your touch right now. So go with us into this new week, and may your grace and love and mercy go with us into the future, however uncertain it is, and remain with us always. Amen.